Hello everybody, it's SD Madhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the E100. This is a tier 10 German heavy tank, along with that, it's got two competitive guns. It's got the 150 and then a 128 millimeter. Um, a lot of people prefer to run the 150 just because it has heat rounds, a little bit higher penetration, but I like to use the 128 occasionally, just depending on how I feel for the day. Now, going ahead and jumping right over into the statistics here. This is with the 128. We have 246 base penetration, 334 heat pin, 85 millimeters of high explosive pin with the 15. Along with that, the 128, 246, 311, 65. Now, the 311 is APCR, so it does travel a lot faster. But we're going to be going over the 15 centimeter today. Now, it's got a view range of 400 meters, which is going to allow it to spot out its own targets as long as you have a spot crew on it or you're running coded optics. I'm not running coded optics. I'm just running situational awareness, which does get my view range up to 424, not including the premium consumable that I'm using, which does bring me up to 466. Now, the hit points of this, 2,700 hit points, it's, it's quite meaty. It's got quite the amount of hit points. Along with that, 30 top speed. I don't feel like the top speed of this tank slows it down too much. Now, jumping down, rate of fire with the 15 cm, you're looking at 3 rounds per minute, along with that 750 alpha for your standards and your heat, 950 with the high explosive. The 128 gets 490, 490, 630. Now, the 15, 2.9 aim time, that's not too bad. You're going to be mostly brawling close quarters with the E100 to begin with. Ammo capacity of 50 rounds, you're definitely not going to be feeling a shortage of those anytime soon. Accuracy of 0 .4, 0 0.4 gun dispersion, that's going to be a little bit hard to handle at times, but, you know, whenever your shots do make it, the enemy fills it, that's for sure. Along with that, 7 degrees of gun depression, 20 degrees of elevation, 7 degrees of gun depression allows it to work a ridge line, but with the turret armor at the 250 that it's at, I do not recommend it. Now, PC, if you guys have been keeping track of PC, did buff the E100 to 270 turret armor. I would like to see that implemented on console as well, because that would make a big difference. And if they do implement that, and my review is suddenly obsolete, well, I don't know. It'd make me happy. It would. I would be so stoked to see that being 270. Along with that, 20 degrees of turret rotation... At 20 degrees, it feels nice. Honestly, for a big super heavy, it feels fast whenever it comes down to close quarters mat matches and just the overall brawling. Uh, 1,200 horsepower overall, 9.24 horsepower to ton, top speed. We already went over top speed. Reverse speed at 15, you're really going to enjoy that reverse speed at 15. Y you feel it just go in, back up, go in, back up. Quick pop shots, angle the turret a little bit. Make that 150 side armor auto ricochet. It just feels amazing. Along with that, traverse speed on the tracks is 22 degrees. Combine both of those together and you get a total of 42, allowing you to readjust on light tanks that are trying to circle you. But there are times that it's not enough, depending on what you are going up against. Terrain resistance, so hard terrain. We have one for medium terrain. We have 1.2 and for soft terrain, you have 2.1. So if you're ending up on that soft terrain, your power to weight is going to be dropping down to about 4.1 around there. It's going to be really lackluster and you're going to fill it a lot, especially whenever your power to weight drops, your traverse speed also drops. So that probably drops down to, let's say nine rather than 20. Now, I'm going to go ahead and jump over. Keep in mind, this is Tanks GG. This is an older version of the tank off 1.9. So, we had the 250 armor in the front. Honestly, looking at it, it doesn't look too bad. This is up against its own shells with the 246 base pin. So, let's take out a tank you actually see quite a bit out on the field. Now, one tank that you do see quite a bit would, let's say, British Super Conks. We'll save this, and now we're going to take a look. So, with the standard rounds from the Super Conk, he has a pretty good chance to go through the frontal armor with that 33. But with the penetration buffs that console has been applied, he probably can go through this without much difficulty if he's on flat terrain or slightly coming up. No problem. The bottom bar is a weak spot. Along with that, the top of the hatch, extremely weak. 
But the second that you start to angle the tank is whenever the armor really starts to show itself. So the angle you're going to want to hold, let's take a look here. So popping it out, let's say you slightly give them a little bit of like 15 degrees up on the side here. So then maybe 25 degrees in the turret overall. Maybe not as much, maybe like 20. Now let's go ahead and verse the APCR. And this is where you start to see the E100 suffering a little bit. So side scraping, in my opinion, inside the E100 is a lot better. So let's say from a distance, you're behind a wall. You're pulling out to come out, come around. This is up against APCR. So the 400 millimeters in the side heat rounds above 400 millimeters of pin will be able to go through this without much of an issue. But that side armor, it's not going to touch it. And even if they are loading heat, just a little bit more of an angle. And now it's impinable, especially if you're barely coming around a corner. You're just overexposing your rear end a tad bit, and you're overexposing your sides a little bit. Now, E100, overall, it's not a bad tank. The small gun is just as competitive as the big gun, but there's moments you will find that penetration to be lackluster and just not helping you out as much. And before we continue, there are a couple of things we got to look at. So, shell velocity with the big boy rounds out of the E100... You're looking at 752 along with that. The second you start loading heat, 606. So you're going to feel that slowing down a lot. Both rounds are slow. They are not the fastest. Your high explosives have got the same shell velocity as your standards. So leading shots can be a little bit difficult. But other than that, getting up close, this tank handles extremely well. Now, the 128, I really do enjoy using the 128. And if you guys... You hear everyone say the 128 is just not the one to run. Try it out one of these days and see if you like it. Now, without you know going over too much and going absolutely insane, let's actually jump right into the replay here on Sunset Coast. So this replay was actually featured during the ranked battle talks with Noodleton a little while back. And honestly... It, it was such a good replay. We're going to use it a part of the review. I also have a 128 video as well that I was considering using, but I feel like it would make the video a little bit too long, so I didn't include it. But if you guys would like to see it, please let me know down in the comment sections, and I'll make sure to upload it. There will be no voiceover unless you guys want a voiceover on it. Just let me know. But the E100, talking about it, taking a look at the statistics. So... I've played the E100 quite a bit, and to give you guys a rough estimate on how much I've played it, it's it's a lot. I have I've it was probably one of my first tier tens, if not my third or my second tier ten that I unlocked inside the entire game, and I just find it overall to be a very solid tank. It's it's not bad, it's not good, it's just balanced. Now. As time goes on, this tank has lost a lot of its ability to be able to handle those close quarters engagements because a lot more people are loading premium. The turret armor at 250, it does feel like it's time to give this thing a little bit of love and it would be much appreciated if Wargaming would give this tank some love on console. Now, I have put 262 matches inside the E100. So, a pretty good amount. Along with that, 75.59 is my penetration inside the tank. So I penetrate at least three out of four shots consistently penetrating. Now, the high explosives on this tank and everything else that it has, along with the new reload mechanics that they added to the game with the advanced reloader and all the new crew bonuses and everything else, plus the skin that they added, I decided to take this tank out of the garage just to start giving it a run and try it out. Now, we're loading heat rounds. We decided to put a heat round into the side of the Type 4 uh, more than likely, we would have actually penetrated that round if we were loading AP, because AP does not lose any penetration when going through spaced armor. However, whenever you're shooting heat rounds in the spaced armor, you're going to lose a lot of penetration. Because I believe it's 5% every single 10 millimeters that you travel. And right there, our first penetrating shot was actually a high explosive into the rear of the M48 Patton for 1,148 damage, also setting him on fire. So, off to a good start. Coming around, putting out one more high explosive to take down the Patton. This was also during the update that there was peas behind a lot of tanks. For whatever reason, lots of peas. 
And also the T95E2 Tier 8 Premium had no name, so inside the queues it was pretty funny to see them because you just didn't know what you were looking at. Now, talking about how the E100 is holding up inside the matchmaking, I'd say it's holding up decent as long as you're using your side armor rather than your frontal armor. At this moment, I would say the E100 feels more of a support role, but at the same time, you can get it into an offensive role without a problem. Now, we're just going to be pulling up along the side, moving down the center. Honestly, if you guys are looking to grind out this tank, or if you already have it and you haven't played it in a while, I highly recommend to pull this out. So we auto-lock the T30, wait for the 777 to pull up under to take a shot into the higher armor, rather than auto-locking the 777. Because if we auto-lock the 777, it's going to put us on the spaced armor, but locking under the T30 and being a little bit more lazy on the aim allowed us to do a penetrating shot in the top armor. Now, the 128, you know, I'm, I'm firing off a lot of premium this match, and that's because the penetration of 334 heat, I've been practicing a lot more with heat rounds, trying to get used to using them, because they work a lot differently than APCR and AP rounds. So, I have been firing off a lot of heat rounds as of recent, but that's just because I'm trying to get better with understanding every single round inside the game, and I find heat rounds to be extremely gnarly rounds whenever it comes down to taking on heavily armored tanks. Along with that, even some haul down mediums, heat rounds are just absolutely devastating. And a little bit of lag there. I was having a couple of lag spikes this day. Along with that, there was a guy in game chat that was just going absolutely bonkers talking to me and he was saying that no one was assisting him so I decided to say, well, I'm up to 3,600. You know, maybe you should have pushed up down the middle with us. But you did perform a really good role on that right side. And there we go, taking out two tanks, pushing up, using the weight of the E100 to deal some damage. Along with that, trying to use the side armor to avoid the OE4 and avoid multiple shots coming up. Replay is lagging a tad bit, it looks like, but... As I said that day, there was a little bit of lag going on. So up to 4,339 damage, 1,000 assisted damage, and a Strav going through the turret armor because of the 288 base penetration those Strav ones have. Those things are absolutely insane at tier 8 along with their concealment. You know, that, that might be the next one. Maybe not. No, no. We'll, we'll do that one later. Totally fine. I'm too busy grinding out the Polish lines right now, which honestly, if you guys are grinding out the Polish lines right now, they are super fun tanks at this moment. They just feel absolutely amazing. Pulling down, pulling off a snapshot to take out the Strav S1, WZ111-4. Got to be a little bit worried about him, the 490 alpha that he has and the 340 heat pin that he has. So we're going to try and side scrape coming up. We do bounce a shot off of his top plate with the heat rounds, a little bit too much of an angle. Should have had a high explosive end to be able to do the damage, but it is what it is. You know, we, we're, we can't control time. We can't go back in time to make a, you know, make a better shot. So I enjoy whenever you guys see me bounce and you see me make mistakes, because guess what? None of us are perfect. Everything takes time. And if you're looking to get your stats up inside the game, don't expect it to go overnight. It, everything takes time. However, this WZ decided to come down and land sideways in front of us. Basically giving up beforehand. It was a 5 versus 6. And he, if he would have relocated, we would have had a lot of problems. So up to 5,183 damage. Only 594 blocked. Now, blocking inside this tank, as I said, you do want to rely on side scraping a lot more than anything else. But with the advanced reloader inside the E100 with the 128, it allows you to swap shells freely, giving you that versatility you need at close quarters. Along with that, if you have to get close, make sure you don't pull me and basically give away your hit points to a Yag Tiger. Now, the shot that the Yag Tiger fired, the Yag Tiger fired, went straight through our turret, even on an extreme angle. And that's probably one of the biggest downfalls to the tank. But 
you know, wargaming, it'd be nice to see some love on this tank. We did make a profit of 5,700, though. That's surprising to see. Extremely surprising to see. Along with that, Radley Walters, Mastery Badge, High Caliber, Top Gun, and on the way to the second mark. 6,520, along with 1,032 assisted. So overall, about a 7,500 damage combined and a Radley Walters on the E100. Now, let's go ahead, take a dive, take a look at the crew here. We're using Rapid Aim to increase the gun rotation speed, along with that six cents. Rapid Loading, Born Leader, Clutch Braking, Off-Road Driving, Situational Awareness, Track Mechanic, and Controlled Impact. Controlled Impact, big boy deal. I use this crew on a lot of heavily armored German tanks just because it's more focused on mobility and reaction time than it is focusing on accuracy and pure damage. I like to do mobility on my heavily armored Germans just because I feel like they benefit more from mobility than they do benefit from accuracy bonuses on the gun. Along with that, the equipment that we're running on the E100, we're running the advanced loader, the advanced reloader, and improved ventilation, and that fourth equipment slot basically doesn't exist. Never take it off. If you take it off, it's just a bad day. So, overall, the E100... It's lacking a tad bit in a couple categories, but a little bit of love would make this tank go a lot longer. However, with the new camo that they added to the game, adding a skin to it to make it just look so much nicer, I decided it was time to pull the tank out and give it some fun. Now, I did get a second mark on this with the 128, so if you guys do want to see that video, let me know in the comments. If you guys liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, seriously, leave a comment, you have no idea. Like, I'm going to be kicking back, slacking off, and going through comments today. So it'd be nice to see some down there. So, until next time, it was nice having you here. Catch you on the battlefield.